Okay. I think now your your screen is sharing. Yeah, I think now you can see the supply chain. Now, going back into this, uh, the one principle basic we talked about last week or two weeks ago regarding the supply chain is the supply chain mean supplier, manufacturer, distribution, retail, and then the customer. It's basically, it's not just a five step. Now, prior to the supplier, you can have raw materials, you can have my source of raw materials or where things are coming or supplier. On the end there, on the manufacturing, it could be manufacturing, could be assembly, could be make. Then after that, you will have obviously the distribution and retail, which is a very important part. And you remember we covered this. Now we're gonna talk more today about specific models uh, called SCORE, uh, uh, all these models uh, are backed up with the global process mapping. We're going to study all this and we will see how this works. Now let's go back in a quick, quick 10, 15 minutes introduction again. So the overview. Overview, as you can see on the screen, of the supply chain. First thing on the left, there is the S's, who they are, the source or the supplier. It's up to you. Source and supplier are the same. In the middle is the manufacturer, make or made, is the factory, is the warehouse, is the information system and all that. After that is the delivery, distribution, to retail or warehouses or inventory, then go to customers. This is basically there an overview of how the supply chain works in the real life and real industry, as you can see in the screen. Now. We understand all this from last week. What else? Or the week before, from the first session. Now, the supply chain itself, what is it if you want to define it? The supply chain, it does and include all interactions of suppliers, manufacturers, our distributions, and customers. So basically, the supply chain is the full A to Z process where the supplier, the source, the raw materials, interacting with the make, with the manufacturers, with the business. And those, all of them are interacting with the distributor, or the delivery, or the retail, or the warehouse where things will get sold out. Could be online distribution. And all of them, they work to the final executive level of services, which is going to the customer right there on the right. Now, a well-functioning supply chain should have information technology between all the partners. This is will be the heart and the brain of the supply chain is the information flow and the information technology. Obviously, the supply chain, as we said, and including a number of things, obviously, when we say it's moving from source supply to make, or to manufacturers, to distribution, we talk about transportation, we talk about scheduling information, we talk about cash, invoicing, procurement, and all this. We will cover more of that actually as we pro progress. Next, information technology. The like of everything else nowadays, the most important thing is the electronic business. How we digitalize our paperwork. We have an online emails, uh, selecting products, banks, shipments, producers, production, all that will be done online. One of the main one of the main other things there in the middle is the barcode. By barcoding things. By barcoding things, obviously, you will be managing to track the life story or the product life cycle, in and out, where is your equipment has been when you barcode it, because you will have a cutoff point every single time is leave and stay. And then the final is a retail industry. We will cover more of this. But what I want to cover before we come into more materials is the information technology itself is very important. If you, don't, you do not manage the communication or information alongside 
that means you're going to be open and exposed to many other uh, difficulties when you have no information, no tracking model, no technologies there in the place to help you managing uh, your own information between all parties right from the beginning to the end. Next, we covered this last week. However, it will be more makes sense for us to look at it again is the information technology and requirements on information technology of ordering process. You can see there on top, information technology without electronic digital inherence or information technology. You can see that buyer generate purchase order then there is a fax paperwork someone else there type it print more paperwork send in orders when you do order process online with electronic digital system you can see one person doing the purchase order one person doing the invoice you can see there is no paperwork there at all so the process below is more efficient more quicker more cost effective Anyway, this is not the purpose of today teach. Today teach is more about the score and the global process mapping. Let's see. The overview of supply chain, we covered it. We said one box there on the left is the supply source. In the, the box there in the middle, many boxes of factory make and made, then distribution. And after that, go to customers. So when I come to my suppliers, my suppliers themselves, they can have three tiers or more. Tier one supplier, when they have a strong capability of distribution, everything. They have more technical advantages. Basically, they are the best supplier for me. Tier two suppliers, they only produce one part of the components, for example. Tier three of the suppliers of the people who they produce only spare parts or after sale services or different elements of suppliers. Now, this is really just the tiers of suppliers. You can also design it the way you would like to shape or design your supply chain management system. Next, streams in the supply chain. Starting from the manufacturing element, let's go to distribution and sales, is go to customers, customer go to disposal, disposal go to resourcing again, and resourcing back to supply manufacturing in the same stream, usually go round and round as a product life cycle. That's why we're going to study score today to understand what's happening. Next, supply chain integration. What information we'd like to, to, to share among the supply chain members, among my partners? The information I would share, problems get detected. Building trust and confidence around the company. Order book, things like that. What I would do also when I collaborate planning, forecasting, and design. That will help me to lower my cost. When I do some kind of executive proper designing, that will lower my cost. Higher capacity I would have. Improve my customer service level towards the end. What if I coordinate and integrate with my workflow production line management? That will give me better production line efficiencies, faster response to customer queries, improve overall services, and be in a quicker response as then. You can see in the third one. Fourth one, why do we need always where we do supply chain integration to adopt a new business model and technologies. Learn from others. Learn from my sources and resources. Learn from my distribution. Why? To follow the new market trend and penetration. 
creating new products and technologies as required, improving efficiencies, customization management. Okay, the score process. Now in all reality, in real life, you don't need to manage the score process in mathematical way. All of it is more about supply chain management or score model. We're gonna study it now. So what is the score process identifications? The score itself is supply chain operation reference. What does it mean? Is a process have a unique three-step movement and then one return. The three steps, they are the source supply, then to the make, manufacture or model, then to the distribution. And then the return will show me up. Now we're gonna study this in detail. Score process have unique identifiers. What are they? PSMD, S supply, M make D distribution R return. Capital plus numbers, they could be P1, P2, P3, and I'll explain to you how they work. Capital plus numbers as well, when you want to identify your process in a multiple uh, three way process. There is, you can do single way process, you can do two way process, you can do three way process. We're going to study all this now. I'm going to show you how we do it in the score. Now, in a group exercise, we have how we going to uh, have this weekend supply chain use exercise for dinner party. We're going to do that later or together, actually, or maybe do something else. So this is how the score model look like. Okay. So basically, it's the plan overall. And then you have the source, make, and deliver on multiple occasions. And then the return is how you work. We're going to design one now on the screen after, very soon. Score contains three levels of details. Level one is top level. Level two is configuration level. Level three is the process and enhanced. Then a schematic and comments. We can we're gonna design two or three together today anyway. The next one for me, actually, after finishing the score model, is something called a mapping a flow or a global mapping process. Very important. This would present your score model between the source make and deliver. And they are there, the mapping material flow is how the global mapping show look like. We're gonna study this in a minute as well. That will show us how to manage the overall process and what is required. We're gonna manage all together. I will do uh, a proper map and then we start linking all of us together, make sure that we understand how it works. What the mapping process look like? The planning, I have a number of activities in the planning. However, the source, I have two sources, two suppliers. I have two make, I have two distribution companies, and then it's go to the second. So sometimes you have, you have a multiple just to manage your overall business. We're gonna study all that again in a minute. Linking the supply chain performance attitude. Now, we will leave this. Let's start managing. First thing first, I want to share a couple. Sorry, has anyone got any questions? And regarding just a generic questions, if you have regarding the score, you can see in the screen. Because I would do exercise, but I'm just talking about supply chain in general. Any questions? I don't think so, which is great. No problem. Now I would like to share with you a video to show you the supply chain 
for example, in Kentucky Fried Chicken, the KFC business, how they do their own score. So I've got my essay written, and I've been working on it for about a week. So now I'm going to show you how I use Grammarly to edit. What is score model? And how does it work? Score model helps deliver value to the customer by purchasing, production, and logistics that work in a concert directed by overall strategy, plan, processes that balance demand and supply to develop a course of action to meet sourcing, production, and delivery needs. This process aligns the supply chain plan with the financial plan. Source. Processes that purchase goods and services to meet planned or actual demand. Emphasis is on selecting suppliers, establishing policies, scheduling deliveries, and assessing performance. Make. Processes that transform a product into a finished product to meet demand. Emphasis is on scheduling production, measuring performance, managing inventory, and configuring the network. Deliver. Processes that provide finished goods and services to customers. Emphasis is on order management.
got a problem. I am not able to hear anything. I don't know whether we're supposed to be hearing the audio. Alignment Hi, hello. Functions. Can you um at an average of two to six times return on investment? Yeah, it's been uh, hard for some minutes you, now. Can you not yeah, see with the video or hear the video? Yeah, we can see the video. The video we can see the video or we can I can't hear anything. We cannot hear anything because I can hear the video in my end. Uh, no, we, we okay. can't hear the video. Yeah, because I realize uh, you are on mute. So the minute you go on mute, we, we don't hear anything. Uh, okay. Uh, so let me, let me, re okay. Let me go back. So if I share the video now, can you hear? Can you check? Philippines, Thailand, Singapore. Yes, can hear now. I can hear now. Now that's fine. Okay, so I think when I mute, then okay, so I'll leave it unmuted. Okay, I'll go okay. back. Hey, I only want to show this core model. That's it for a couple of minutes. Okay, let me go to it back again. I might actually go to another video because this one, uh, the voice is not really clear. So I'll get you to another video a couple of minutes, and I'll leave myself on. Actually, all I wanted to show you is how KFC, they manage their own thing from the source all to the make, deliver and return. And then we will do it together now. So I'm not too worried about the videos. Um, I just want to show you how others do it. And then I design it for you. Because it would be good for you at least to see so how international companies doing it. In this discussion of supply chain, I will describe one of the most widely accepted and used process oriented model, the supply chain operation reference model or the SCORE model. The supply chain operations reference model is a management tool used to address, improve, and communicate supply chain management decisions within our company and with suppliers and customers of the company. The model describes the business processes required to satisfy a customer's demands. It also helps to explain the processes along the entire supply chain and provides a basis for how to improve those processes. Here we can see that supply chain operation reference model belong to all stakeholders from suppliers to manufacturers to customers. That's what I wanted to achieve. You can see that each of the steps, supplier, organization, or customer, they had the same level. Now, let's design it ourselves. So, let's back on. I need to get you now to share something new. Here we go.
Okay, I hope you can see it. All what I'm sharing is, is a blank piece of paper. Okay, so what does that mean? I'm going to start design for you, score model, because you will be doing that in your assignment. First thing first, I will have suppliers. Supplier. Can you copy that box? Four times. Why? Because you have supplier, you have make, or manufacturer, You have distribution. Or delivery, no problem, exactly the same. Finally, customer. Each now here could be supplier, or source. Now, don't forget, that during this process, you might have many suppliers, many manufacturers and makes, many distribution and deliveries, many customers. First thing, let's say there I am building a car. Simple as building a car. I am building a car. I would have the components they coming from two or three or four different uh, type of countries or different sources, different suppliers. Therefore, I will highlight them as everything coming, they will have a different symbol. First one, S1. S1 in China. I have another supplier. Call it S2 coming from Ghana. Have another supplier, three, coming from America, USA. Supplier number four, source number four. Again, could be China again, could be anywhere. Let's use India. So these are, for example, you can have 10, 20, 30 source or supplier, not a problem. Make manufacturers. Manufacturer is the point when you start have a combination of where things would get manufactured. Let's say, if we talk here about a source 
Now, the source and supply should be specific product. That product could be only the engine, only the gearbox, could be anything. You might have a multiple of processing procedures for each product. But anyway, let's look at manufacturers and make. This one, let's make it in different color so we can deviate it from, here we go. So M1, first factory in India. Factory number two in France. Factory number three or make or that in Japan. So I'm, now I'm doing my score model. Okay, guys. So that's how you start designing based on the information giving from the company or from your research international. Now, I want to explain something else to you. This could not be just countries, could be villages, could be towns. Let's say you decided to manage and design a score model for your own country only. For you making a burger, you're making a sandwich. We can do that later. Anyway. Distribution or delivery. D1. USA, one of them, for example. I'm just for an example. Could be any other countries as you give it. Let's put United Kingdom. Let's do another one. Back to South Africa. Okay. It could be more as well. You can have more than one country you deliver. Where is my customers? My customers are there, are my final. So that's where I am now. This is, for example, how we're going to make. Now, next thing. I need to come and connect. So this is S1 China. They do engine. Ghana, I have gearbox. Of course, you will have many, many elements. I'm just, I'm just saying you might have more. America, you have another end. Next one, you have gearbox from, from India. Now, my manufacturer in France receives, you're going to be given all this information, receives. Engines from America. Also received gearboxes from India and received gearboxes from Ghana. So it's receiving from two to different sources. My manufacturer in India only receiving engines from China next door and gearboxes from Ghana only. My Japan manufacturers only receive gearbox components.
Next. I will distribute my cards from India. They go to United Kingdom. My cards from France go to USA. Also, go to South Africa. My cards from Japan go to United Kingdom and go to America. Oh, just let's just put this in. You don't have to make it complex. So that really starts showing me how is the score model working. Now, what do I need else to do? This is not showing me a model. And I will do it how I would make it later. Now, we said this is my source. We don't need the source make anymore. Let me just delete them because they've taken space. And they all obviously going to the customer at the end. Anywhere the customer is, doesn't matter. Okay? So this is designing, just designing my score. Now, what does that mean for me? Score one. Here we go. Score one for me is S1, M1, because my engine's going to India manufacture and my S2 going to M1 as well. So S1 and S2, they're going to M. Then from M, where I'm going? I'm going to D2. So that's my score number one. Are you with me, everyone? You just follow the sources to the make. Okay? Score number two. This one. I have S2. Going to M2. M2 going to both D1, D3. D1, D3. Next score. Score three. S3 from USA engines going to France, M2. And again, from France going to D1, D3 again. From France going to both USA and South Africa as distribution. My last one, score four. From India, S4. Going to two manufacturers, M2, M3, going to France, and also going to Japan. Then from France, going to D1, D2. And from Japan, going to D2 only, which is already covered. 
So this is how it looks like. It's basically look like the source and the supply. Where does it start? Where is the make and what manufacturers? It could be much more than complex than this. Okay. Has anyone got any questions? Now, you remember we said under each there will be planning of a transport orders procurement invoicing now we said under each one Do it for you now. For so each one will be exactly the same. If you remember, we mentioned. For each one, you will have a planning, proper planning, which is counted as P1, P2, P3. It will be transport, ordering, procurement, invoices, anything else in your supply chain. And they are each one of them. Now, sometimes you might use, if your source and your manufacturer, no, sorry, let's say your manufacturer and your distribution is the same location. That means they're both going to use P2, exactly the same system. So there is no need for this. We're only going to have P2 for both. All depends on where they are, the location, and all that. Has anyone got any questions in regarding the score model? Anyone has any question regarding the score model, please? Okay, good. Now, the next one. Any questions, sorry? Any questions? Sorry, no questions. Thank you. Now, you might, be, you might be told in your case study supply chain or manufacturing that this manufacturer in China can only distribute to certain countries, can only distribute. That means that gives you indication that the source going to one make or going to some distribution. So you need to understand the methodology of that. Now, let me share with you again the presentation. So what does it tell us? If you can see that. On the planning, you would have a plan of a supply chain. Could be P1, P2, P3. Now, P2, plan of source. Then a plan of make, plan of deliver, plan of return. Now, this could be worked for every single step there. Because your source, they could have make, deliver, and return themselves without the make part. Because they're also a manufacturer. You're not just getting the source straight away. It's not like a sun or light or something. The source could be the engine. So basically what I'm saying, it's there. If we go back there, yes. M1, the current source for them is the engine from China. But how did we get to the engine? We need steel, metal, oil, manufacturing. This is engine itself in China. We'll have the same process behind it as well again. Raw materials, steel, copper. Then they will do make, fabricate. Then they will have distribution, delivery. And basically it's landed here in China as an engine. And now from China is going either to India, France, or Japan for the car manufacturing assembly. So you can imagine each one of them, as you can see in the screen, will have exactly the same process. Source, make, and deliver for each three, for the source, for the make, for the deliver. They all have the same. And that's when you'll have a conflict in some of the activities.
And as you can see there, they divided S1, source of stock, make of stock, deliver of stock. They all make S1, M1, D1. Source of MTO products, make of that, make to order product, deliver them. Source of ETO, engineer to order. The so you can see they're all different type of products. They all could be going to a different trend. Now, has anyone got any questions about this? And what could you see there on the screen as well again? Before I move on to the global mapping process. Any question? Let's watch another video to understand more about this. How international uh, they doing it. So I'm just trying to. You want to be an IT pro, so you must have all of these tools. Remote. Try to reference. It may be important pain management. Several ovals. Okay. So I'll share this video with you again. This video, and then after that, we'll be ramped up with the score, and then we can move to the global process mapping. They both requirements in your assignment, which we will cover in the last session. Okay, so um, I will stop my video, but I would mute myself so you can hear. Welcome back to lesson two, where we will introduce the supply chain operations reference model. Upon completion of this lesson, learners should be able to describe the supply chain operations reference or SCORE model and discuss how SCORE may be used to analyze and improve supply chain operations. And we have a question. Why do you think it may be important to have a common nomenclature and view of supply chain across customers, suppliers, and service providers in a supply chain? I believe that different graphical representations resonate with different people. Therefore, in these lessons, we'll present a wide variety of graphical depictions of supply chain. We'll first turn our attention to the Supply Chain Operations Reference Model, also known as the SCORE model. It was created by the Supply Chain Council, and the Supply Chain Council is now merged with the American Production and Inventory Control Society, which is one of the many professional societies associated with supply chain. It's interesting to note that since integrated supply chain management is a relatively new concept, until the early 1990s, there were no definitions associated with supply chain management. Each company had its own words, phrases, and metrics to describe logistics and supply chain activities. And it was often difficult to talk with channel partners in precise terms. The Supply Chain Council was formed as a nonprofit in the 1990s to create a common nomenclature and common process components and metrics with a goal of enabling organizations to more effectively work with each other. Let's start from the point of view of an organization producing a finished product. You see that there are several ovals representing the components of the supply chain, an organization servicing, serving as a finished manufacturer converts materials into finished products, and once the conversion process is complete, they hand off or deliver the finished good to their customer in the next stage in the supply chain. This representation of the SCORE model is at the very highest level. Behind each of these ovals, there are hundreds of pages of documentation describing best practices, nomenclature, and metrics associated with several levels deep of detail on the process definitions. SCORE model additionally has differing process definitions based on the specific operating model of an industry, such as an engineer to order manufacturer versus a make to stock operation, such as in consumer products. Cereal would be a good example of a make to stock operation. The efforts of the Supply Chain Council in creating and evolving the SCORE model over the years have been 
much made it made it much easier for supply chain providers, manufacturers, shippers, third party providers, uh, et cetera, to more effectively communicate on a day to day basis and create rules uh, making supply chains more efficient. This chart uh, provides several examples of very high corporate level supply chain metrics. The metrics measure performance in key attributes such as supply chain reliability and responsiveness, flexibility, uh, costs and asset management. And um, as noted a moment ago, behind these high level metrics, there are much more refined process specific metrics. Having these process and metric best practices available through the SCORE model allows companies to compare their current operations to establish practices and make improvements where needed. In this lesson, we have described the supply chain operations reference model and discussed how SCORE may be used to analyze and improve supply chain operations. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next lesson. Okay. Sorry, let me share back to actually the stop sharing now. Stop share. At least I can see you. Okay. Uh, hi, hi again. Okay. So we we have seen we have seen in details how the score will be made, and that was being described to us now. What's next is, is something called the process global mapping. It is also coming at the background of the score. You only can build it at the background of the score. So I will share the screen with you and I'll show you how can we manage it. Now, it is generally look like this. Let me share the screen with you. Just look like this on the screen. It's basically the mapping, the global map. Global map, and into it, you put the symbols as you designed your score model. And I will do it now for you. So basically, we will do it for the car manufacturing again. Let me share that screen with you. New share. Here we go. Now. First thing first, we need the global map. Okay, so global map. We're going to bring it from Google anywhere if you like. And I found uh, a nice one, actually. Quite a few nice ones there. I'm just trying to look for, for one really clear to make it for you easy. Normal map for country, the country's name. Okay, I found the global map. You can use whichever one you like. I found global map for us, here we go. So this is actually the global map I found for us. Okay. Now, first thing, I have the engine in China. It's going to India. So I have in my score S1, S2, M1. First thing, let me do the symbols. S1, a symbol of a source in China. I have S1 in China. So I will draw. I'm looking for something. Let's use one of those, uh, the source. Uh, 
Uh, let's use a symbol. Let's see what symbols we have. Represent the source layout. What else do we have we can use here? Shape or format. I can't see any symbols. Yeah, they don't allow me to go symbols. So let's see what symbols we can get. So if we can have a symbol for, no, actually we might go to Google again. So let me get, go to something else. Symbol uh, for source, let's have a look. Symbol for raw material. Okay, well, I found something. <laughs> uh, come back here. Actually, this is too fairly large. Let's use this symbol there. Copy. First one, let's call it S1. And we put with it any small source. You can put any symbol you like just to present that source. Here we go. So this is S1 in China. It's too large, actually. You might just do S1 itself. Let's do it that way. Only S1 here. So we got S1 in China. Then it's going to, where is M2? M1. M1 is in India. So M1. So I've got M1 in India. India is there. And then they both go into D2, to D2. So I've got S1, S2, M1, D2. So I've got the D2. D2 is in United Kingdom. And where is the United Kingdom? Is there. It's there. And then I have S2 in Ghana. So can someone show me S2? Where is Ghana? Ghana somewhere there, probably. Let's put it there, just out. So can you all see my screen of the global map, please? Can you? Can you all see my screen? Yeah, I can see. Perfect. So now what we need to do, we need to link in my score model in order to make a global process mapping. So my score model telling me S1, S2 going to India, S1, S2 going to M1, M1 going to D2. So S1, apologies, this is S2. S1 in China, S2 in Ghana, M1 in India, D2 to UK. That's the first one. S1, S2, M1, D2. So. I start putting my lines. S1 to M1. Try to oh, this is a lot. Okay. So this is the first one. Second one, it was S2 to M1 as well. Yes. And then from M1 to D2. Now, 
This is show you read one score. Let's do another score and then we start discuss. Score two, S2, we have it already, going to M2. Okay, and M2 is in France. So I have M2. In the France, which will be somewhere here. Right under the UK. And then M2 going to USA and South Africa. For D1 and D2. D1 America. And D3 is South Africa then. Now, we need to link them now. So, I have my other S2 going to M2 straight away. To manufacturer two. Then from M2 going to D1 and D3. Okay. Now, uh, I hope you all can still see my screen. Now, many of you can come and say, Louis, what is the, what is the benefit of all this? We did the score model here, S1, S2, S3, M1, M2, and D1. We did the score model there. And now, I have the score one, two, three, and four. What do I want to achieve? I'll show you in a minute, and you will agree with me. Now, looking at S1, going to from China to manufacture in India. That means it does make sense. Why? Because it's a closer. Shipping is to the minimum. Maybe cost and efficiency are cost is minimum, efficiency is the best. Now, now I come to study S2. S2, when it go to France, it seems to be shorter distance. However, S2 also in Ghana, gearboxes, gearboxes going to India. It's too far. What is the point? You might say, I have another manufacturers of gearboxes. It's already in India, S4. Why don't I get the gearboxes S4 from India rather than having gearboxes all the way from Ghana? And that's how people start manage their overall the global mapping process. Make sure a car or, or, or a sandwich uh, or, or any service are delivered in most cost-effective and efficient way. How? By managing the global map. So we put recommendation now. Lessons at the table. To put a recommendation. That's us as a, as a consultant. First recommendation. First, move S4 gearbox to study, to deliver to M1 rather than S2 from Ghana. So this is you as a consultant. You look at these things. Second point, let's see second point. All this for a process, capacity improvement, efficiency and all that. Next one. Let's study else. From Ghana, going to there, there, okay. Now, from India as a manufacturer, 
of cars is going all the way to the UK. While there is the manufacturer in France is really one hour away. But don't forget, maybe the cars they get manufactured and assembled in India are different models to the one the France factory can produce. What that means? Then you need to start look at expanding the factory in France in order to deliver UK. Second thing, M2. Look at the possibility to deliver all models cars to UK than M1 from India. Because it's too far. All this cost effective and processes improvement. Next. Let's find another point. The manufacturer in France deliver, doesn't deliver to the UK, which is a bad thing. It delivers to America, okay, not too bad, and delivering to South Africa. However, maybe from India to South Africa is a closer. So, D3 to look at possibility getting deliveries of M1 in India. If closer, obviously not just closer. If it is a closer, cheaper, if they have the same products. So this is really now where you can start do discussions. That's you as a consultant. That's when I go to big manufacturer companies. We look at the, that's why we draw the global process mapping to understand. Now, don't forget, we only done it to engine and gearbox. But you remember I explained to you, actually, if I look at how the engine being made, how the gearbox being made, I will end up with more of a hundred of S, D, and M there. That time, the gear, this one here would be 1.1 and 1.2 because it would be the first stage is going to be how to make the end. Let me save this. Score model. More options. Let's save it on the right hand. Okay, has anyone have a question? Can you still look at my screen? Has anyone has a question, please? Any questions? Is it all clear what we're doing? Let's draw the rest of it actually as we together. So what next we've got, we got S3, S3 in USA, they also do engines. So S3 in America. They deliver engines to M2 to D1 in USA. So they deliver engines to M2. So look at this. This is now you will understand where I'm coming from. S2 deliver engines and then coming back to from France to D1 and T2. So now we added another source of engine. Actually, the engines coming from S3 in America, they deliver to France. And then from France, you can see they're coming back to America again. So this is no good. If the engines they only source to come to France, and France doesn't deliver to the UK, 
which is close by, this is bad, then vice versa, come back to America again. So what is the point? Can I not establish a factory or manufacture in America where I have my engines there and I can have a gearbox coming from Ghana closely to do a manufacturer in America? So opportunity, I'll add another point now. S3 delivered to France, then back to D1 in USA. Look at possibly, possibly have D in USA. D4, for example. That's another point. You as a consultant. Let's do the last one. We did S3, M2. D1, D3. The last one is S4, which is where is it in India? S4 in India. Going to M2, M3. Where's M2, M3? I got my third manufacturer. In Japan, where is Japan? Japan is there. Then from Japan, going to D2. Okay, so I have S4 India. They go to M2 and M3. So from India, they go to M2. And they also go to M3, S4, and then M3. We know where M2 going, but M3 going to D2. Wow. So you can see now that definitely you will have, you will say, okay, my fourth source from India producing gearboxes, they're going all the way to France, not a problem. However, they go all the way to Japan and France where I have manufacturer already in India. But it could be different model, different type of cars on the same company. But again, it's something to study. Can I divert that production line to be sufficient to that country rather than I travel all the way to Japan, all the way to France? And then funnily enough, you look at Japan, from Japan going all the way to the UK, where there is, we said about India is too far. What about Japan then? That's even further. So you, and there is no link between France and the UK where the car is coming from Japan and France. So another opportunity to look at S4 can, can be delivered to M1 at same country or diversify the production line. So that means I can cover what they want rather than a travel all way, million miles away. Now, has anyone got any questions, please? I would like to hear some interaction. At least other things, Hello. or good or bad. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it what? Hello. Hi, hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you, of course. Hi, Benjamin. Yes. So, looking at it, most of your, your scenarios, right, or decisions, recommendations are only based on uh, distance. Yeah? But I just want to call out that, yeah, 
there may be other um, factors. Of course, you, this is a recommendation that you're making to the company to consider. Um, I mean, either even putting a factory or training a supplier, but it could be that sourcing the raw material, say in S2, um, is is cheaper for whatever reason than sourcing it from um, S4. Or sourcing from S4 is cheaper than sourcing from S2. And so that's why they probably want to source from S4 and send all the way to Japan for manufacturing um, uh, uh, in their plant at M3. So just wanted you to probably highlight on some of the other um, things that would probably be considered. Um, it could also be tax, right? Uh, where probably exporting that material out let, is so expensive that it's actually better. Let, let me let me answer your question. This is actually was in the next now, it's gonna coming next. <laughs> now, first thing first, when you design the global map, you study the feasibility of efficiency, cost, transportation, and supply chain management improvement. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Now, I need to design something else, a different matrix which is gonna be look like this. Let's inserting, don't want the images to go down. Now, now we decided this is pretty much your, our suggestion as a consultant. Not just based on distance, it's based on common and sense, it's based on methodology. It's based on a number of factors that, what is the point of bringing the engine to France, assemble it, bring it back to sell the car in the UK? That doesn't make sense. Then what I will do now, I will put a matrix or a number of things to study. So my matrix will include Cost of make, cost of transport, I can't do it all together, it's not taken at the system, ah, cost of taxes, cost of exchange rate, Cost of raw materials. Cost of labor. You're absolutely right there, Benjamin. But then when you do this, you do this after you do the global process mapping. You just don't go straight away and say, I will run a cost and efficiency model. Now, this is just the cost. After that, you're going to start do availability or capacity and same capacity of make capacity of raw materials capacity of resources Capacity of delivery, capacity of transport, capacity of make itself, capacity of warehouse. Where else? Final one efficiency, quality. Quality of make. Quality of deliver. Quality of resource. Quality of raw materials.
quality of labor, quality of subcontractors, Where is, where is Benjamin? He asked the question. Okay, Benjamin. So now, after we decided to study the opportunity, can we have the gearboxes to be delivered from M1, from S4 to M1, rather than going all the way to Ghana? Now we start study Y. Can we, uh, now we start having First, cost of S2. So now we have in here, you have one line for S2 and one line for S4. And this analysis there will give you which way we go in. We'll give you the answer, whether if it is feasible to change or not. That's how you play it. Another suggestion was, D3 to look at possibility getting delivers from M1. D3 to get from M1 rather than from M2. So I then go and do M1 and M2 comparison. And then based on this matrix, I will come up with whether it is feasible or not based on the cost, capacity, quality. One of the things I want to put, capacity not of deliver, capacity of modeling, of model deliver. Maybe they don't do all models of the cars. Let's put capacity, let's put the capacity of make, of model make. Here we go. Quality of model make. Here we go. So this is how you play. You go on first thing first. You need to do the global mapping, go through the first suggestion recommendation, then you start analyze that. And don't get me wrong, maybe your list would be much larger than this in order to analyze. Apologies, I just need to switch the uh, lights on to start getting dark. Here we go. Apologies. Okay, so does uh, this answer your question, ben Benjamin? It's not based on distance, no. It's based on your initial judgment and your initial analysis is based on the global process mapping. But that will lead you to investigate and analyze and look for other opportunities, how to improve it based on a number of other factors. And maybe the answer would be yes, maybe the answer would be no. We don't know yet until we carry out the proper investigation on each subject, for example. Okay. Now there is much more than that actually. Not just quality, you can say you got cost, ca capacity, quality, efficiency. Compliance, all this efficiency of make. And then again, efficiency of delivery. Efficiency of resources, efficiency of materials, efficiency of labor, efficiency of subcontractor. More and more. I will do another two for you and then we stop. Just to try, try to find different color. Cost, 
quality, capacity, efficiency, let's say compliance. No, put different. Uh, compliance or various different or various models can deliver compliance of make. Compliance. Actually, let's do a new one. Have digital transformation system ordering process quality procurement integrated model yes or no so comparison between all those Space, space, land. Last one, energy cost. <laughs> That's a new one, digital transformation. So you can carry out these comparisons all day long until you come up with the final decision. We will not decide based on the distance, not at all. Okay. So does this answer the question? Clearly why, thank you, Benjamin. The global mapping is the only first step. You're absolutely right. The global mapping is to give you indication about what's going on. Now, don't forget, we only talked about engine and gearbox as already made pro product. We haven't talked about how to make the actual engine. So we, we might could have to screw further down and find out what's going on. So this is only to show you how you do Global process mapping, you come up with your suggestions, then your KPIs, matrix, and analysis study. You will need to do all this. We will not decide based on one thing. Okay. Now, has anyone got any more questions? Any questions, please, before I continue with two or three slides, or I might show you another final video, and then that would be pretty much covered. Everything to do with your assignment for this part. Has anyone got any questions? Okay. So I found you one to show you how to use a process mapping is from, it's for Harvard University. So that would be a high level, nice one. Would be good to watch this. Okay, let's watch it all together. Dr. Edwards Deming said, if you can't describe work as a process, you can't improve it. One of the most powerful and accessible process improvement tools we have to learn with is something called a process map. A process map is a visual display of the activities of a process or a system. Process maps are extremely useful and helpful for understanding how a current process is designed by enabling you to quickly identify opportunities for improvement. Once a process has been improved, process maps can also act as guidance to support people doing standard work and following a designed process reliably. Process mapping is a powerful exercise for learning and improving. 
I often describe it as one of the secret weapons for helping teams to identify variation and potential failure points in their work processes. In an ideal scenario, I like to do process mapping with a mixed group of stakeholders of the process we're trying to improve. I also strive to go to where work happens versus doing it in a conference room uh, or a meeting space. I begin by inviting the team to think about the average patient or someone who represents the normal population this process must serve every day. Then I ask them to attempt to describe the process at a macro level, as high a level as possible. So let's take an example here and draw it, um, just a simple uh, diagram. So usually every process has a start. And the start and the end uh, often use a shape that looks like a pill. Uh, and then what you do is you start to ask yourself, what are each of the steps in the process? And so uh, we might go and say, well, here's step one, put a box there, and step two, and step three. And, and maybe after step three, you, there's actually a decision that has to be made. So we, we reflect that by making it a diamond. And that may bring us to an extra process step down here. So if yes, for example. Uh, if okay. So that's covered to us as well what process mapping is mean. Now I will go back now to the one final thing. Now, now we know how to design a score based on this on the screen. How to make a global process map. You can use some symbols, nice one. You can see warehouse, you can see delivery, you can put like either ship symbol or like a truck. And this is obviously presenting. S1 going to M1 and S2 exactly like we, we did it, but you can do it nicely and shapely in a, in a presentation slide will be nicer. This is the analysis I've talked about. Reliability, flexibility, cost, assets. You can do all these things for different manufacturers and different countries, and that will give you which one is better. Once you do that, you're going to see there is a difference on days and delivery and quality and cost and all this. That will make you to make a decision on called a gap analysis. That's when you study a gap analysis study to understand the performance of each factory, the performance of each step, the performance of S2, S1 on the screen, M1, M2, the performance of them there based on cost, flexibility, and assets. One after is, once you do that, you can then start and highlight in your score what's the difference between each other. And then that will give you the opportunities of improvement. I need, there is a matrix conflict there on D2. On the scheduling, I have a problem. Inventory, I need more, more resources, what's showing to me on M1. I need there on S1, I need, is underperforming in a process system, S1. There on the last end, uh, what was it, this one there, what number, D1, what's the problem in D1? I have underperforming process system again. So now we when really start looking at what's going on, who's underperforming, or what, who's showing me any issues, and then you can look for possibility of improvement. So this is really how it works in real life. Now, there is a number of levels, as I said, in the roadmap. So when you come here, example, for score process modeling, you can see there we put some, this is, let's say, they're coming from one point source into manufacturing there in this country. Then they go from a warehouse. There's another thing coming. We look at manufacturer company produced 15 days forecast, the components from France based on production volume. Then the suppliers bulk, they're coming from different country. And a lot of things in the story, then shipping weekly to happen to Europe. So you can see there is a lot of complexity there. And then when you start study, which is more feasible as a cost, reliability, capacity, and resources, and all this. And then, then once you have this case, you start highlight it. S is my source one from south of France. S2, my source two. I have another source there from the warehouse. I have two, one manufacturing point there where this guy there is standing, and I have three distribution points 
one to south of France, one there to other part of Europe, one to far part of Europe. So you see me Russia or something or to Central Europe. And then now you start studying. So that's how your materials uh, and, and distribution and make flow map will be look like when you start. So when you symbol thing S1, M1, Ts, S, M's, and Ds, then you, you highlight it all and connect it. it. will show you exactly where you are. I put for you on a slide, the last slide there, what's the score matrix to be look like? Reliability, responsiveness, flexibility, cost, management. Now, this is the things when you do your gap analysis on, really. It's more about the cost, performance, flexibility, and, and responsiveness. And it is all called, let me show, share that with you again, which is all called gap analysis. When you start study, your, your cost, your capital of asset capacity, your quality, effectiveness, your efficiency, your flexibility, all these things, when you study it, uh, one of the things that's add, very important actually, just got in my mind, flexibility, flexibility of make. Again. M1, no M1, it doesn't have to be M1, M2. This is just for example, it could be anything. So let's change the color. What other color we can get here? Maybe this, let's try this. Flexibility of make, can I make all model? Flexibility of delivery, flexibility of resources, flexibility of materials, flexibility of labor, flexibility of subcontractors. Flexibility of warehouse, let's see no materials, warehouse here. So that's really now give you a full indication of what things we need to study in the gap analysis. And they are there again for you. Everything on the slides given to you there as well. So I think we pretty much has covered everything. Has anyone got any questions about today's session? That was a heavy session with the score and the global process mapping. Has anyone got any questions at all? Any questions before we end this session for today? Any questions? Well, you need to tell us yes or no, otherwise I'll have to stay online. <laughs> at least tell us no. Uh, from Australia, it's already six o'clock now. From Benjamin, Benjamin, he said, none for you. No, thank no. you, Benjamin. Thank you. Thank you. Still awake. And Emmanuel, he's, uh, I think he's just back from work. Maybe he's having his dinner and he's enjoying the lecture. But anything, yeah. anyway. Yeah, uh, thank prof, you. Uh, yes. I would like to ask the score, the score chart, doesn't need to be placed on the, on the world map? for you to actually determine the cost efficiency, the transport, uh, uh, Yes, I understand the question. Uh, Thank you, Manuel. And yes. other, and, and also, doesn't it, does it just need to be placed on the board map? Yes, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be. You can create another analysis showing you a kind of a process from country to country. There is other methods uh, we, we will study on supply chain when you don't use a global process mapping. But the score model itself, the supply chain operation reference and the global process mapping are the more powerful. Why? Because they give you indication about the linkages and the links between the countries and the links showing you that in a wider picture and in a bigger picture to look at distance and space and all this. Because believe it or not, the majority of your cost of money is going on delivery, transportation, uh, and also wasting in time and all this, and insurance and tax. Tax, insurance, transportation, and delivery, that's where all your costs are making. If you're going to go and pick up the car from the factory, it will receive to you almost like third the price would be gone without all these delivery insurance and other stuff. That's why when you buy a car from your local country would be much often much cheaper than a car coming from Germany or a car coming from America or, 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 or United Kingdom because there is a lot of delivery insurance, taxes, customer duties and all that. 
when you know when you buy your car locally it will be relatively cheaper so yes you can av- not use the global map but then you can use uh, uh, like country to country and distance and you look at this in a different perspective but the score model it uses a global process mapping uh, as a technique but there is other techniques doesn't which we will study one or two of them later as well they don't use any global yeah, but it's the right thing, the right thing to do to get a global map and then start point out. So that will show you the best thing. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Same when you want to travel for holiday, Emmanuel. If you said, I want to travel for three hours, where shall I go? You're gonna pick up the global map and you check who's three hours away from you. You know? You're not just uh, gonna go, oh yeah, I like to go to Japan, but I want to reach it in three hours. It wouldn't happen. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so you still more look at the at the distance and obviously the distance mean time, cost, transport, yeah. insurance, yeah. your exchange rate, everything will start change as much as you go far. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. You might so translate to three, four countries in the middle. You need to look at you need to do a journey plan. Very important the journey plan. That's why the global process mapping is very powerful. Uh, because people can visually see how wide it is That's and how bad to start with. Straight away, yeah. straight away, as as a wide, see widely see straight away from first vision. Thank you so much. Bro. You're welcome. Um, has anyone got any questions? I think from.